Hi everyone, Rosie here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm doing the try a chapter tag, which thank you Emretta for tagging me in this. Her video as well as the original by Book Paradise will be linked down below. If you haven't seen this one around before, the premise of this tag is pretty simple. Basically, you try a chapter of a bunch of books and sort of give your thoughts and decide if you want to keep reading them. I've chosen to try a chapter from five books. These are all books that have been on my TBR for quite a while. They're all books that I'm not totally sure if I want to read. They're ones I bought a while ago and I think this is going to be really helpful to decide if I should keep them on my TBR and keep looking at them and thinking, oh I should read that, or if it's time to just say no. Nah. They're gone. The first book I'm going to be trying a chapter from is Lillian Boxfish Takes a Walk by Kathleen Rooney. It took me an embarrassing number of tries to get that right just now. This book centers around our protagonist, Lillian Boxfish, who in 1984, I think it's the end of 1984, she's 85 years old and she sets out for a walk through New York City. And I think sort of as she's walking and observing the city and sort of experiencing the world around her, she's also reminiscing about her life and all of the things that have happened to her in 85 years. From what I've read on the blurb, it sounds like she had a really interesting career and then left that to become a mother. It is apparently a love letter to city life and also a reminiscence on a remarkable life, both of which sound interesting to me. And as I said at the beginning, this is one of those books that has been on my TBR for ages. It sounds fascinating. Like, it sounds like something I will really enjoy. And yet, for some reason, I never quite reach for it. I see it on my Kindle and I go, oh yeah, that one sounds cool, I should read that. And then I don't. So I'm going to try a chapter and I'm hoping that either I will fall in love with it and prioritize it within the next couple months, or I'll go, yeah, the chapter was fine but I'm not in love. I'm going to leave this for who knows when. I'm not going to keep thinking I should be reading it. Okay, one chapter down, and that one was really short, so I was tempted to read a second, but it's the try a chapter tag, not try a few chapters until you get a feel for the book tag. So even though it was only like three pages, I stuck to one. In this first chapter, we learn about how Lillian was inspired to go into a career in advertising by a combination of her aunt, who worked as a nurse in New York at the beginning of the 1900s, and also um, like an ad campaign in her childhood that her aunt used to send her postcards of. So between the two of these she was inspired to pursue a career as opposed to just go into a life of like education and then married at 20 and motherhood like her mother wanted her to. So I definitely want to keep reading this one. I think it sounds like it's going to be really interesting and yeah, I think this one's going to be good. Next up, I want to try a chapter from Goldilocks and the Water Bears by Louisa Preston. This one is non-fiction about astrobiology, which is a feel I didn't really know existed until I read the blurb on this book, but I get the impression that this is about the requirements for life and the different conditions that life can exist in. I bought this purely on the title. I bought this because it mentioned water bears, which are another name for tardigrades, in the title, and if you weren't on Tumblr circa, I want to say it was like 2014 when they were really big and they were everywhere and everyone was talking about them. Tardigrades are like these weird little organisms. I don't know if they're technically microorganisms. My social science side is showing. But essentially they're these tiny little things that look kind of like weird bears when you look at them under a microscope, but they also survive in crazy conditions and they can go essentially dead for years and years at a time and then be revived when the conditions are right. They're fascinating creatures. So I bought this book thinking it was all about those, but I've since seen some reviews that sort of say it's not really about them at all, or it's not very good, and I have so many nonfiction books that I want to read, and so many interesting nonfiction books that I want to read, that I'm going to try this chapter, and I'll let you know if I think it's one that I'll actually get to eventually, or 
if I'm gonna say goodbye. which unfortunately was not a great thing because I was nowhere near as interested as I was in the Lillian Boxfish one. This was just a really confused chapter, honestly. I don't have a sense of what this book will be about. It jumped from science fiction and how that's inspired by science and how it's ex inspired further research, and then it was talking about the history of astrobiology, and then it was back to science fiction, and then it was a detailed history of the search for life on Mars, then we got some more science fiction, and then all of a sudden it's talking about the implications for the meaning of humanity if we do discover extraterrestrial life. All of these things could be interesting to me. I won't lie. I'm easily interested. But I just don't think this is going to be the book for me. It just feels confused. It really seemed like the book was jumping around between ideas with no clear linkage. There was no thrust or sense of purpose. It was just sort of like, here's a thing I'm going to talk about. Oh, here's another thing I'm going to talk about. And that's not something I enjoy in nonfiction. I want, after reading the first chapter, to have some sense of what what am I going to be reading? Is the next, I don't know, 10, 15, however many chapters are in this book, are they about the history of astrobiology? Are they about research currently being done in astrobiology? Are they about how astrobiology inspires and is inspired by science fiction? I don't know, maybe it's all three. If it continues to be all three in the way that the first chapter was, this just isn't a book for me. I guess it's kind of unfortunate to be like, yeah, this isn't a book I really want to read at all. But at the same time, isn't it better to just say that, yeah, no, this one's not going to be for me early on before I waste a lot of time on it? So yeah, that one's definitely not going to be put on the list of books I want to read soon. The, the third book I want to try is Snake Agent by Liz Williams. This is the first in a series of mystery novels, and it follows a detective inspector with I don't know if it's a fictionalized version of the real Singapore Police Department or just a fictionalized police department in Singapore, if that makes sense. But he works for the police, he's a detective inspector, and he's their person in charge of supernatural and mystical crime stuff. So already this sounds really interesting. And in this one, from what I understand, he has to team up with an investigator from hell not in the joking like, oh yeah, they're the such and such from hell, but like actually someone who is working on behalf of hell to solve a crime to do with illegally trafficked souls. This premise sounds incredible. This sounds like a series of books that I will really, really like, but I just don't feel drawn to it often. It's been on my TBR. I see it and I go, yeah, that sounds cool, but I don't want to pick it up. So. Yet again, I'm hoping that either this will excite me or show me that it's not for me and that we can just make a decision already instead of continually feeling like I should be reading books and not getting to them. Very short first chapter. This one had a prologue and I don't... are we counting prologues as first chapters? I don't know. But I think the prologue was enough in this and I think I want to keep reading it. We open with Detective Inspector Chen seemingly tied up, maybe hung upside down? He's held captive, he's got a demon with him, they seem to have like a... I don't know how exactly this is going to work yet, but like the demon seems to be like his assistant or like his aide, like something like that, if that makes sense. They're held captive by an alchemist and 
who knows what's gonna happen next. As I said, I only read like three pages, so I didn't get a huge deal of information, but the writing seems interesting, the world seems interesting, the concept sounds great, so since it didn't do anything to actively turn me off reading it in the first chapter, I'm gonna continue. Not right now, because I've still got two more chapters to read, but like, in the coming weeks slash months, I definitely want to read this book. The fourth book on my list is I Am Malala by Malala Yousafzai, which, if you've been living under a rock and don't know, is her memoir slash autobiography of her fight against the Taliban to the right of an education for both herself and for other girls in her area, and then of course the subsequent assassination attempt on her and her recovery and all of that. This is a book that I was not really into reading when it came out. I was just getting back into reading as an adult when this was published. And at that point I wasn't reading any nonfiction. So I didn't read this when it was big. And I'm just not sure if it's one that I'm going to actually want to read or if it's one that I've got on my TBR because I wish I'd read it in 2013. I'm very interested in her story, of course, but I don't know if it's a book that I'm really interested in. So let's find out. This is the first one where I'm not sure what I want to do after reading the first chapter, or again, in this case there's a prologue, so I've read that, but it was like a good five or ten minutes of reading, I think, so I think that's enough to get an impression. The first chapter gives a brief introduction to who Lala is and like the situation that she was in before she was shot, and then details the day of the shooting itself and what was happening and all of that sort of thing. I think this is a book that I would like to have read, but I'm not sure I'm at a place where I want to read right now. It's an important topic, it's something I care about, but I'm not sure it's something I have it in me to read something so personalized about right now. I almost feel like I could read a more zoomed out non-fiction book about the situation in general and about fight against the Taliban and the fight for the right for girls to be educated in that area in general. I just don't think I'm at a point right now where I want to read such a narrative first-hand account of someone who is so involved and so heavily influenced by this. This is what I think I'm gonna say I'm not saying never, I'm not saying I'll never want to read it, but I don't think it's one I want to prioritize. And finally, I have All Grown Up by Jamie Attenberg. This is an apparently hilarious novel about a 39 year old who's sort of figuring out what is adulthood even, I think. As someone who is also trying to figure out what is adulthood, someone please let me know if you do know. I'm interested in this. It sounds like she's going through some stuff in her life and also people important to her at transition phases, her best friend's getting married and her brother's having a baby. So I get the impression that it's sort of a, am I on the right track? Am I making the right decisions? Am I actually happy with my decisions? type book. I feel redundant saying this at this point, but again, the premise and the concept sounds like something I might be really into but I never reach for it, and I never think to pick it up, and I don't know why, so let's just read a chapter already. exactly have chapters. I think it describes itself as vignettes of this character's life and her experiences. And this first one sort of gives her a brief overview of how she arrives at this point of like, holy crap, what is being a grown-up? <laughs> so we follow how she drops out of art school, moves home to New York, eventually gets you know, a small apartment in Brooklyn, has an okay job where she makes pretty good money but she doesn't really like it. 
and I get the impression that she has that sort of like externally everything is fine, she's got the decent apartment, she's got the decent job, she's got friends, she's got her brother, but inside things are sort of a mess. She has a view of the Empire State Building from her apartment and every day she draws it because she doesn't want to like stop making art even if she doesn't want to share her art with anyone or talk about it with anyone and even though she sort of at least in her perception isn't very good at it she wants to keep doing it so every day she draws the same view and then finally eventually a condo building is built in front of her building sort of cutting off that view and that seems to provide the starting momentum of like, what next? What happens? I don't know if the whole book is going to be written this way, but the first chapter was written in... I think I'm correct in calling this second person singular, so it's, it's you, you know, you do this, you do that, you feel this, which is interesting and not something I've read a ton in books. So that intrigues me, happy to read more like that. Honestly, I think I probably will continue with this book. I don't know where it's going exactly. I don't know what the overall reading experience is going to be like, but I'm more open to that in fiction because it's about the story. I tried to include a bunch of different books, some fiction, some non-fiction, so that it wouldn't feel too much like I'm comparing them. I wanted to assess each book individually and I thought that would be easier if they were all quite different. But it's turned out that the three fiction I picked are all interesting to me, and the two non-fiction, unfortunately, one of them I think is a never, and I Am Malala is a not right now, maybe someday. Hopefully I will find time in the next month or two to read those three books. They all seem really interesting to me, but I have a lot of reading that I'm doing right now. As I'm filming this, it's just the beginning of non-fiction November, I'm so excited about that, and I really want to prioritize those books for the moment. Then I've got some other stuff I'm reading. But yes, I definitely want to get to these. I definitely want to continue reading those three books. And I think this has been really fun. This is a tag that I'm thinking I might do again in the future. Let me know down below. If I do this again, I'm thinking with sort of like different themes or like different focuses maybe. Would that get boring? Obviously I'm not planning on doing it like every month, but I don't know. I think this bears repeating, right? Now, this is a tag video, and if you've watched my channel for a while, you will know that I really don't like tagging people. It makes me uncomfortable, but I've realized that I appreciate it when people tag me in things, and I think it's only fair to pass that feeling on and to tag some other people. So I'm gonna give it a go. I'm going to tag Crystal from Crystal's Bookish Life because she does a lot of cool reading vlogs and like reading different books and reading books that she bought for the cover type videos, so this might be interesting for her. I'm also tagging Katie from Katie Reads and Rants because I recently watched her DNF tag video, and I think given her thoughts on DNFing, I'll be interested to see her answers. And I'm also tagging Sarah from Sarah's Reading Nook, because she does great reading vlogs. I know I haven't done this vlog style, but I've seen some people do it vlog style, some people do it sit down style. Do whatever you want. Obviously, if you if I've tagged you in this and you don't want to do it, no pressure. I don't want to make anyone make videos. And of course, as always, if I haven't tagged you in this and you are interested in making this video, please consider yourself tagged. I would love to see your video. I would love to see your experience with this challenge, tag, whatever you want to call it. That wraps this video up. If you've read any of the books that I tried a chapter from today, please let me know down below. Do you think my assessment from the first chapter is spot on, totally different from your experience with the book? I'd be interested to hear, but no spoilers, especially for the ones that I do plan on reading. Other than that, if you liked this video, please hit the like button down below. If you would like to see more of my videos, please hit the subscribe button, and thank you for watching.